Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover one of the basic audio editing concepts within Reaper, the Ripple mode. This might be especially new to all the people who are coming from a one track editing background like Gold Wave or Sony Soundforge. So you should definitely stay tuned in and see how the different Ripple modes can change your way of editing audio across one track or even multiple tracks at the very same time. I'll see you right after the intro. First, before we clarify what the different ripple modes actually are, I've just prepared a Reaper project with two tracks. We've got the first one. one, arm, voice, one item. We will solo this Soloed. and play it to you just for demonstration purposes. This is a little test recording to demonstrate how rippling behaves when using the three different ripple modes, ripple off, ripple per track and ripple one track. And a second track with a bit of music. And together, it's like that. Unsoloed. This is a little test recording to demonstrate how rippling behaves when using the three different ripple modes, ripple off, ripple per track, and ripple one track. Here we go. Now, as the voice recording already says, we've got three different ripple modes. By default, if you just launch Reaper and don't change anything within the Reaper preferences, the default ripple mode is ripple off. What does that mean? That means if you insert an item or you remove an item, nothing along the timeline is automatically moved. If you insert an item, it will just be inserted. All the other items will remain untouched. If you remove an item, then all the other items will still be untouched. However, there will probably be silence where you just remove the item unless there is some other item which is filling up the space. That is ripple off. You just take something or add something and all the other things will remain untouched. Let's demonstrate this real quick. We will go to the voice track. One arm, voice, one item. We will go to, bar two. don't know, bar two. Press A to cut the item. One item added. Now we go to bar three. Bar three. And do the same thing. One item added. And now we go to the second item because we now have three items. Three zero one two zero. And we just remove that. One item removed. And we go to the beginning of the project. Bar one. And play. This is a little test recording. When using the see, we cut the item and then we removed it, and now there's silence. The item just got removed, and nothing is in its place. The air doesn't automatically get filled. We are not in a vacuum. That's what ripple off means. Now we are tapping into the tape realm with ripple per track. Let's turn that on with the toggle key switch that is Alt Shift P. Ripple per track. So Alt Shift P cycles between the three ripple modes. If you want to go to the next ripple mode, which is ripple all tracks, which I will be demonstrating in just a second, you again press Alt Shift P for that. And if you want to toggle ripple off, press Alt Shift P once again. Now, ripple per track. We will control Z here. Undo the items. Now our item is back, right? One, zero, two, zero. To demonstrate how that is the item that we want to have. And now we ripple per track. Ripple per track is still set. So we remove that item once again, press delete. One item removed. Go to the beginning of the project, Bar one. play, and see what happened. This is a little test recording when using the three different triple modes. See? The item was removed, but instead of leaving silence, we just removed the item and pulled all the items behind it, in this case item three to where the item two once was. This is basically tape behavior. Imagine a tape, like one of those audio tapes or video tapes. In the case that you want to remove something from that tape, I mean, re remove, not insert something as a replacement. You wanted to get rid of that. You, in the easiest case, instead of you know, writing something in its place, would take a scissor, cut the part where you want to start removing something and put another cut 
after the part that you want to be removed so that you can take it out. And then you would get some other tape, don't know, whatever, and make sure to fix the tape once again and basically connect the two loose ends together so that you have a working tape once again. And as soon as you play that, it would just, you know, skip over the place where you basically connected the loose ends and you would have one tape that is fixed. And you just got rid of the part that you don't like. That is the same behavior over here. If you've repair one track enabled, as soon as you remove something or even paste something, everything else will be moved and pushed or pulled along the timeline. So that means that if you have, for example, recording of an audiobook and you missed a take or something like that, you have a break, you mispronounced anything, you just go there, enable rip it per track, cut it, left or right, create a separate item out of the part that you don't like, just hit delete, and everything else will just move along the timeline so that it basically generates a totally fine audiobook once again. Well, that's the difference between rip it off and rip it per track. But what if you have a project that contains multiple tracks? So as you can see here, this is a little test recording when using the three different triple modes. Obviously, our track was moved, but the music track stayed as it is, which can be a problem if you're working with a large project with multiple tracks and you want to make sure that everything stays synchronized. The timeline will always stay the same no matter what you do on one of those tracks. You want to remove something? Fine. But you need to move everything else along because you created an audio drama and then you decided that this 10 second long scene in the middle of your current scene has to go because you're already too long or you just don't like it anymore. You need to retake it or want to move it to a different place within the audio drama, whatever. And you want to remove that then removing only one track is not going to work because you've got other tracks too. For that purpose, we've got Ripple All Tracks. We press Alt Shift P once again. Ripple All Tracks. And now we press Control Z to restore our item. Undo the item. And now what we do is we basically take a scissor and cut through all the tapes at the very same point in time and at the very same time and we connect them at the very same position once again. So we go back to one arm voice three items pain. Track one and select the second item. One, two, zero. And now we press delete. Zero items removed. And don't get messed up with the zero items being removed thing. Osara isn't really precise in detecting how many items actually got removed here. So don't care about that. It actually removed enough items. And we will just notice that by going back to the beginning of the project. Bye -bye. And playing. This is a little test recording when using the three different. Notice how it not just cut the item on the first track, but also the item on the second track. We basically decided that we want to get rid of one thing on the first track, but we don't just want to cut through this one track, but through all the tracks, through all the tapes at the very same point in time and for the very same amount of time. So we basically took a really large scissor and cut through all the tracks at the very same time, at the very same position. That's what rippling does. It can be really, really helpful. My videos, for example, are always edited with at least ripple all tracks, sometimes even ripple per track, depending on the situation. If you want to, as I said, disable ripple once again, press or shift B, ripple off. and there you go. If you don't know in which ripple mode you actually are, you can press control shift P, ripple off. which is control instead of alt, right? This will report the ripple mode that you're currently in. So I hope this little and short demonstration clarifies on how the ripple editing modes in Reaper actually work. The same applies to if you paste an item. In the case that you insert an item on a track and you have ripple all tracks enabled, this will make sure that you take a scissor, cut on all the tracks where you want to insert the item, then you insert the tape with the new item on the track that you've selected, and then you insert an empty piece of tape for all the other tracks so that the timing stays exact, but all the other tracks, we have a silent area where the item on the selected track was inserted. This is really easy to demonstrate. Let's go back to ripple all tracks. Ripple per track, ripple all tracks. 
Now let's control Z. Undo delete items. Now let's go to this item. One zero zero one one. Let's cut it. Zero items removed. Which automatically cuts through all the tracks. Now we go to the second item, Two zero. which is the beginning of the item. Now we paste. One item added. And now, because we only cut one item, but the others were removed automatically, it doesn't remember the other items that it just cut from the other tracks. So we inserted the item that we just cut from track one back to track one, just where it was, but the other track, the music track, we just have silence here. Let's go to the beginning of the project one. and play. This is a little test recording to demonstrate how rippling behaves when using the three. See, that's how Ripple all tracks works when pasting something. That should be it for Ripple editing. I hope it helped you to clarify what the basic concept of rippling within a multi-track tool like Reaper actually means and how it works and helps you further in your daily audio editing tasks. If you've got any questions regarding rippling or whatever else, feel free to leave a comment below the video. One quick announcement though, thanks to the official Twitter API being a paid product from this Tuesday onward, I will leave Twitter in the future. Thanks for reaching out to me on this platform. If you are on Mastodon, however, you can reach out to me on that platform nowadays and you will find the link to that within the video description. I'd love to see you there soon too. Thank you for watching. Until next time, bye-bye.